Have you ever wondered why posture matters for your pelvic health? Well, it does, and today I'm gonna to tell you all about that, and I'm gonna share with you two easy exercises that you can do every day that are so important if you have computer neck or text neck. So I'm gonna share with you these two exercises, but I wanna give you some really good background information as well as to why it even matters and why we're doing this. So please watch the information, but if you've watched it once and you wanna skip straight to the exercises, go to the video description and click on the timestamps, and then you can just jump forward to the exercises. But if you're up for it, go ahead and just watch for a little bit longer while I share some background information about why this even matters for your pelvic health. Okay, so let's talk about this because if you know me, you know that my programs and courses for pelvic health all talk about lifestyle. That's a really, really big pillar of my message is that exercises are important for your core and your pelvic floor, but it's what you do the rest of the day that really adds up. It's your mindset as well. And it's also how you carry your body, how your posture is, how you move and lift throughout the day. All of that stuff that you do all day long really makes a difference. So posture is what we're focused on today. And one really interesting thing is that your head, the human head as an adult, weighs somewhere between 10 and 12 pounds or around five kilograms. And so that weight, when it's stacked on top of your spine, when it's loaded in a good position, is you know still 12 pounds, that's a lot of weight. But for every inch forward that your head goes from a good neutral position, so for every one inch forward, it's like you're adding 10 pounds of weight onto your body. So if your head is forward three inches of where it should be, it's like you got your 12 pound head plus 10 inches, or excuse me, 10 pounds of weight, another 10 pounds of weight, another 10 pounds, that's 42 pounds essentially that your head is needing to, that your, that your head is putting on your spine. So it's all of this heavy, heavy pressure and you can feel this yourself if you were to imagine holding a weight. This is a 10 pound weight right here. So this is a 10 pound weight. It doesn't really, you know, it's not that hard to hold when I'm holding it back here. But if I hold it forward, oh, <laughs> it's like every bit forward that you're holding this heavy thing dramatically makes it feel even harder. So this is an example of basically what's happening when you're holding your head forward all day long. It puts a ton of strain on the muscles that the tiny little neck muscles that attach your head to your body. And it also puts a lot of shearing force and, and pressure on your spine that can cause spinal issues. And then it also causes changes in your entire posture and alignment, which puts pressure it changes the pressure in your body, in the pressure system that's internal that ultimately can put downward pressure on the pelvic organs and cause pelvic, contribute at least to pelvic floor issues. So let me show you a visual example of what it could look like at the computer. Uh, now, normally you probably wouldn't be kneeling on the floor like I'm kneeling right now, but you probably have maybe been in the position even where you've been seated at a desk and you're sitting you know, in a chair and your bum is tucked under like this and your head is like I'm showing <laughs> and your shoulders are tight, your chest is tight and look at this, look at how long and overstretched these front ne neck muscles are and how short and tight these, these back neck muscles are like this and just think of all of that weight that my head is. So we've got all of these forces on the muscles and the joints and the bones of the spine. Then my posture is jacked up. <laughs> it's not a good posture. My bum is tucked under. We've got all of this pressure from this weight of my head up here. And see how my spine is just kind of rounded and my organs are really compressed in the pelvic area, the, the abdominal and pelvic organs. All of this downward pressure on everything. My pelvis is also in a really bad position right here where the bony support isn't there to help support the pelvic organs. When I'm in this position, it's just kind of like a saggy place for all the pelvic organs to kind of squish down into. It's not good. There's lots of reasons why we don't want this. And this tucking under also usually causes glute and 
the glute tightness and tightness in the other hip muscles, which can contribute to pelvic floor tension and imbalance issues. So you've got all of this tightness and remember that tight muscles aren't necessarily strong muscles. Tight muscles are usually weak muscles. So you've got tight, weak muscles. You've got long, overstretched muscles. You've got postural issues. You've got pressure changes that's causing downward pressure on your pelvic organs. You've got spinal shearing and potential for degeneration in your spine, and you've got all these tight, tired muscles all over your body, not just in your neck area, but also throughout your whole core and hips too. So remember that the body is entirely connected. Nothing in your body exists in isolation. So it really matters how you hold your head. And that's why I wanna give you these two exercises to fix forward head posture like this, and also text neck posture where you're like this do, 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 texting and your whole head is down. Look in this position how long and stretched out these back of the neck muscles are and how short and tight these front of the neck muscles are. So we want to reverse all of that with the following exercises. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move stuff out of the way and you can do these exercises just once a day and just a couple of times whenever you can. It's a really, really important thing to be consistent and persistent with these types of postural retraining exercises because if you just do it once, it's probably not gonna change anything. It's something you need to do regularly to really get the benefits. So for our first exercise, <clears throat> we're gonna actually kind of warm up with a move that you may not need to do every time. You could probably ultimately just go straight to the exercise, which looks like this. But if you are a little bit tight through your chest, this is gonna be hard, and so I have a good warm-up move for you to get you used to the neck thing that we're gonna be doing to reverse the text neck. So text neck, your head is, is forward. You've got these long, overstretched back neck muscles, and you have these short, tight front neck muscles. So we're going to bring your head up. We're gonna lengthen your spine toward the ceiling. So lengthening up, not lengthening down and forward, we're lengthening up. It's kind of like you're a helium balloon on a string. Picture your head as like a helium balloon and it's floating up the crown of your head. Not like this, not that kind of lifting up, but it's like the crown of your head is lifting and your spinal column is lengthening and growing taller. So that's what I want you to picture. But you're also gonna be kind of like bringing your head back like a chicken, this kind of move right here. <laughs> so picture like a chicken move. That's what I want you to do for this exercise. Your head is going to be pressing straight back, not pressing back and looking up, but actually just pressing straight back. So this right here is a good warm up in itself, just allowing your head to be how it naturally kind of wants to be, which is probably kind of more like this if you spend a lot of time at the computer or a lot of time texting on your phone. So just bring your head from where it normally is and bring it straight back. Think chicken, funky chicken, okay? Here's another way you can do that if you wanna go against gravity and challenge yourself a little bit more is be on your hands and knees and now you're having to fight gravity a little bit. So think about really separating your fingers nice and wide and bringing your head back. Funky chicken, head comes back, your spine grows long. So head comes straight back. Okay, the actual move though is you're still gonna do that head kind of funky chicken situation here, <laughs> but you're gonna do it actually with your hands behind your head. So this opens up your chest and shoulders, so you're getting double duty here. You're getting the neck stretch and your shoulders are opening too. It's also strengthening your mid back, and again, strengthening the back of the neck, which has become long and weak from too much time like this, texting. So we're strengthening the back of the neck and stretching and opening the front of the body too. Please know that I'm doing this in kneeling simply because that's how my camera is set up and all of that, but you can do this standing or sitting in a chair or in other positions. You don't have to be kneeling like I am. So what you're gonna do for the actual exercise, if you are doing fine with the funky chicken and you want more, then you're simply gonna bring your hands behind your head and you can have your fingers 
apart or bonus points, have them clasped. This is really going to allow some resistance that you're going to have to press your head back into and it's going to really open up your chest. So either have your fingertips on the back of your head or hands clasped behind. Elbows are wide out to the side and I don't want you to look up like this. That's not the point. The point is funky chicken, press back. So your hands are providing resistance and you're pressing back and growing tall with your, with your head toward the ceiling. Again, I want you to, to see what not to do is this. That's not what we're going for. We're going for funky chicken straight back, pressing your head into the hands, feeling that resistance and holding it for five, four, three, two, one, and then release. Whew. So that's a lot of work, but it's really strengthening those long, weak back of the neck muscles and opening everything up in front. Let's do it two more times. So just get into the starting position. Arms are behind, hands are behind your head and your elbows are wide out to the side. Try to not make them forward like this. They're open. Now we're gonna press straight back, funky chicken style, straight back into the hands. Feel like the back of your head and even the back of your neck is touching and pressing into a wall behind you. Press, 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 breathe. Don't hold your breath. Press, press, press for five seconds total. We're probably about there and let go. Okay. So if you found that when you even just bring your hands behind your head, it pulls your head forward even more, then what that means is that you're pretty tight through your chest and your shoulders and you're real weak through the back of your neck. So if you're trying to do this move and you kind of look like this right here, then you actually need to back up a step and just focus on some shoulder and um, chest stretches maybe at the wall. You can open up your chest and shoulders in a door frame. Do something like that to stretch and open your shoulders and also just kind of work on the funky chicken without your hands behind your head to just gather strength and mobility before doing the full move. But if you're doing okay with the full move, let's do one more rep. So hands are behind your head. Elbows are out to the side. Try not to flare your ribs forward when you do this. Try to bring your ribs in so they're not okay? So everything is nice and knitted together. Elbows are wide out to the side and you're bringing your head back. Like you're pressing your head back into your hands. It's a lot of work and you're holding it for five, four, three, two, one. Keep breathing and release. Oh. Now I'm working on all of these moves myself, so I'm not perfect at them. Uh, but those are the tips you want to keep in mind that when you do it, elbows are wide, you're stretched out here, your head is pressing straight back into your hands, straight back, not up, but straight back. And you're making sure that your ribs don't flare forward. So it's really an entire core workout. Everything is working together and you're breathing. Okay. So that was the first move. The second move is done um, on your back. So what this next move does is it's particularly good for the forward head posture like this, where maybe you spend a lot of time at your computer. And you see how in this, my front neck muscles are really long and weak. And these upper, these little tiny muscles up here in the back of your neck, they are really short and tight. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lengthen the back of the neck and strengthen the front of the neck. So even though when these are long and weak, it does not mean, you know, they're, they're, they need exercise. So we need to shorten them up and strengthen them too and lengthen the back of the neck. So in the last one, we strengthened the back of the neck. This next one, we're strengthening the front. Let's go down onto the back. So come, come down through your side. You always want to come down through your side rather than just jackknifing down. And what you're going to do is you are going to think about doing the, the funky chicken like we just did, but really think even more about giving yourself a double chin. So it's just kind of a little head nod down. Now this is step one, and you can feel how even that double chin or feeling like you're holding a little lime or a lemon underneath your chin. So hold it there, hold that lime or that lemon right underneath your chin. <laughs> 
I'm going to release so I can talk. But think like you're holding that line between your chin and your neck or you're giving yourself a double chin. Just feel how that lengthens those tiny little muscles in the back of your neck that were so short and so tight. And it should feel really good even just doing this. Now, the next step, so you hold that position, hold the lime in your, between your chin and your neck, hold it, and you're going to lift your head just off the floor just a little bit. Now, because I'm a pelvic health person, I really think it's important to tell you that this will work your core. And so what might happen is if you're not engaged from your pelvic floor first and your low abs, so zipped up, if you're not zipped up through your core, then you might feel downward pressure when you do this. So I want you to be sure that as you're doing this move, and even right now, before you get started with the move, just gently engage your pelvic floor. So do a little light kegel, so gently squeeze and lift, and also your low, low abs will pull in. You can feel this if you go shh. You can feel that lift of your pelvic floor and the pulling in of your abs. It's kind of like a little T. So you're zipped up right here and your hip spikes pull together. You're nice and engaged. I want you to maintain that as we do this exercise, okay? That's gonna help stabilize your core and help prevent um, this feeling of just kind of openness in the pelvic floor, which can lead to problems if you're bringing your head up and it's causing downward pressure. You wanna be gently engaged just to help stabilize, okay? So again, we chin tuck, we're gently engaged through the core, chin tuck, Hold that line between your chin and your neck and just lift your head up off the floor just an inch or two. Now, it's not like a full crunch. You don't have to do that. It's really just your head is lifting in a tiny bit off the floor and you're holding that line. Hold it, hold it. You're strong through the core. Now keep the line held. Keep it, keep it, keep it. Head down all the way and then release the line. Okay? So let me break it down one more time slow and then we'll just do the exercise at, you know, in a more flowy way. So I'm gonna break it down. Let go of your core, just relax, release. And now let's zip up our core again. So we're nice and stabilized. You're not like clenched and gripped like this, like Argh! it's not like that. It's more just a gentle activation where you're kind of turning on your core muscles and you're saying core. We're about to do something that might cause like downward pressure. So you need to be gently engaged and active to help provide support. That's all we're doing. It's not like a crazy grip. So we're gently activated through the core. Now, keep that activation. Chin tuck. Put that line between your chin and keep this the whole time. Keep the chin tuck. Now, head up. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Head up, hold it. Keep the chin tuck, keep the chin tuck. Now keep the chin tuck as you lower the head down. Keep the chin tuck and then release. When you do that, try to make sure that your shoulders aren't tensing up, okay? We don't want this to happen. Um, so what I'm gonna do for the next one is I'm just gonna do it and I'm actually not gonna talk because I think for me it's really hard to talk and do it at the same time. But I will tell you, I will cue you right now to relax your pelvic floor, relax your core, just let it all go, relax your neck. Because we're gonna do two more rounds and I'm not gonna really talk very much. I want you to do it with me. So now we zip up and activate our core nice and strong. Make sure your low ribs are not jutted up toward the ceiling. We wanna pull everything nice and even and aligned. We're nice and engaged, zipped up and strong, active not clenched. Now let's go ahead and do our chin tuck. So chin in and here we go. And release. Okay, relax. Let your head be soft and neutral. And as you're relaxing and letting your head be soft and just relaxed, I'm gonna talk, tell you what I did. So what I did was I did the, ch made sure I was engaged through the core throughout the whole time. I tucked my chin, I held it, I lifted my whole head off the ground, not my shoulders, just my head, just a little bit. I held everything, chin was tucked, head was up, and then I held that chin tuck even as I lowered my head down, and then I relaxed. Okay, let's do it our last time, here we go. 
So engage through that core. Shh. Ribs are in, they're not flared up. We make sure everything is nice and neutral. And here we go. All right, and now I relax. So again, chin tuck, head up with the chin tucked. Hold it for five seconds or so. Head down with the chin tucked, and then you can release. All right, that's that. Press yourself up. I hope you enjoyed that move. So again, we had the butterfly arms pressing our head back, and then we had the laying down, chin tuck, head up, head down, then relax the chin. Those are the two moves. I recommend doing them regularly. Again, persistence and consistency really pays off when it comes to posture because we hold our bodies all day long, often in really bad positions. So it's gonna take a lot of unlearning <laughs> how to, because we hold our body so poorly so much of the day, it's gonna take a lot of unlearning and strengthening to get out of those bad habits. And then of course, remember when you're at your computer, try to put your computer at a height that you're not having to be like this. So a height, adjust the height of your computer so it's in a better position. And when you're using your cell phone, don't just be down here like this, bring it up. I mean, that is the simplest thing right there. So just think of these little things that you can do all day long to help keep your spine healthy, all of your muscles healthy, and your pelvic floor healthy. If you really resonate with this idea of using not just exercises, but also lifestyle and a positive mindset to help with your pelvic health, then please check the video description for more ways that we can work together. Thank you so much for watching, and if this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, the more eyes that are on my channel, the more we can spread this pelvic health awareness around the world. It's not about likes and subscribers, it's about getting the word out. So when you subscribe, when you like the video, it gets this content in front of more eyes and it can help more people. So thank you for your help in helping more people and I'll see you next time. Until then, remember to eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter.